gift for you. Yeah, I was about to start, but I, I see that. Take it. I, I would love for you to open it up now, if you would, sir. I would. Thank you. My pleasure. There's a story behind the gift. I wanted to say thank you for putting it. That, that means a lot to get on yourself. Happy to do it. <laughs> um, it's called the Gift of Life. This is a, a t-shirt, and that string that you're taking off there is, is off of the last bale of hay off of my farm that I sold this year, so I cut it because it was uh, it's meaningful because of the fact that this was the first year that I actually sold <coughs> hay to take that money and put it back into the farm. And that shirt is the last t-shirt that I have that I got when my family went out to Gunnison, Colorado. And Gunnison is the name of my, my twin boy that passed away 14 days after he was born. So that shirt's been on my back but it's been washed and cleaned and I, I would be honored if you would take it. I will um, take it and wear it. I would appreciate that a lot. And um, also just so you, I know you, um, you know the name, but I want you to be able to see the face of my son. That's my hero, who is a, a warrior of kindness. And uh, I would be honored if you'd take just a moment. I just would love for you to have a, a face to see. So you would, uh, Please. That's one of the best. That's Gunnison Strait Swain. 14 days on earth, impacting thousands of lives as we know it. It's Thank you for looking you. at that. Appreciate it, man. Thank you. Let's rock and roll. Podcast, uh, today is a very special day. Um, if you follow my social media, you uh, would have noticed uh, several days ago or a week ago or a couple weeks ago, depends on how quickly the team gets this podcast out, uh, that I rebooted something I did back in 2008 or nine, I don't recall right this second, on Twitter called Good People Day. Uh, at the time, Twitter was super new. Might have even been 2007, but I think it was 08. Uh, Twitter was, it was 08, thanks Dustin. Uh, Twitter was new, there was something that got very viral called Color Wars where like every single person on Twitter back in 2008 picked a team. I created the very green team because somebody started the green team before me because of my beloved Jets. And just fun fact, the very green team won. The game was very simple. Who could get the most people to pick their color and make it the background of their Twitter account? And it was super fun, it got me motivated. Twitter was a very, very naive Nirvana place back then. There was zero conflict or controversy back then on there. And a couple weeks later I got inspired and said, look, this is a platform that goes viral and does fun stuff. Let me create a day. Let's start Good People Day. I think there isn't enough positivity in the world. I think we focus on the negativity. and. And that was it, it was a really fun day. It went super viral-ish. You know, a lot of people, uh, the concept of the day was give a shout out to somebody who you thought was a good person. Super positive, it was super fun, and it was really enjoyable, and it was probably popped up in my mind maybe once or twice since. I, I, don't, I don't think I even, you know, obviously at the time, like in 20 years this would be huge, and obviously, you know, like many things as an entrepreneur, that one just went by the wayside. And then six or seven or eight, and maybe you guys can remember months ago, these two gentlemen came into, actually this is really fun. We did a conference called VoiceCon at Vayner and a gentleman, one of the last questions I had during the Q&A, it's so amazing because you just think about the serendipity of even asking a person in it. Was it the last question? It was, yeah. It was? Uh, you know, you even think about the serendipity of like 500 hands going up and who are the three people that get a question. But the last question, a gentleman stood up and uh, told me a story about a, a man and, and a, a teacher and. Something in it just felt super pure and you know, if you follow me, you know once in a blue moon I get motivated and do random shit and so I said, you know what, I wanna meet that man. Um, I want you to come to my office and bring that man and we're gonna sit down, which maybe you'll mention but I'm not sure, you know, I probably, I actually think you probably thought that would ha then happen. And, or, no, no. You were, no, you I thought you were really skeptical? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, so we made it happen. Where, when, when were you guys here last? November. November, so right, five, five six months ago, we sat in this office and I met the gentleman I'm gonna introduce in a minute and uh, it was super, it was everything I kind of intuitively thought it was gonna be and during it, I don't recall when, but towards the end I think, it made me, I, I said, you know, I want, I want more people to know this, this man and, and more importantly, the, um, the son that he lost after only 14 days, it, it's very clear to me that this man that I'm, I'm building it up uh, is on a mission to make sure the legacy of his son that he lost only after two weeks of birth of uh, 
lives on. And obviously, one of the great things about building a platform when you're, you know, as much fun as it is when you build a big platform to do things like make more people Jets fans and bring positivity and then silly things like try to sell a little more wine or, or sneakers, nothing will ultimately, you know, trump what I think I will be accomplishing over time, which is using the platform to bring exposure to good things. And so I, I hadn't met a person that I thought was so good that it re- jiggered my mind and reminded me of Good People Day. And so we sit here today at 4.34 p.m. Uh, on April 3rd, which is Good People Day <laughs> according to me, so <laughs> that's how it is. Uh, and I, somewhere towards the end of November, I said, I want you to come back and I want to do a podcast with you on Good People Day. And it's fun, right? Like my team, a couple of people from my team are here. We didn't, you know, obviously some of you may know, um, there was a passing a couple of days ago of a, of a gentleman who I was pretty friendly with, very friendly with, uh, Nipsey Hussle, may he rest in peace, and kind of like all the momentum for my April Fool's Day on Monday, this happened Sunday night, our April Fool's content strategy and even Good People Day here on the third middle of the week kind of lost its luster and so we put it out today, it's established. If you go back to April 3rd on my social you'll see people are doing a little something but I'm excited because I actually think this interview will build momentum for April 3rd, 2020 and really this is the end of the Good People Day part of this um, because really what I want to focus on is whatever the hell you want to focus on meaning I would love for you to spend the next couple minutes uh, introducing yourself and uh, and introducing the story that you want more people to know in the world. Yes, sir. I appreciate y'all having me, man. It means a lot. Um, I think one of the things that... Well, what's your name? Oh, yeah. Sorry. That's Richie okay. Swain. Um, yeah, I'm from North Carolina. And I'm a teacher and a farmer and a, a, a father and um, a lover of the outdoors. And yeah, um, I'm very thankful for this opportunity. I greatly appreciate it. If there's one thing that I would want somebody to hear today, it's the time to listen to your story it can it can bring healing to to your life and i love listening to other people's stories because everybody's got a story and if you just take the time to listen to it you can actually learn from other stories and i bet you right now I, I hope that there's folks listening or watching and and i bet some of those people right now gary are facing their biggest fear or thinking about their biggest fear and i believe that my family is is living proof that if those fears actually do happen you can keep living i think so many people get wrapped up in fear that that they can't even live their life but my family is living proof man that if that fear does actually happen you can keep living and you can use your story to impact thousands of lives and that's what we're doing. That's what we want to do with our lives. And that's what we're, we're going to do with our lives. And I remember when we met back in um, November. I and, was, and before we transition, let's give a shout out to the third gentleman here because he brought us together. Yes, sir. I appreciate this man so much. I had the honor and privilege to teach his son. And um, I'm very thankful for him because it blows my mind that he had the chance to ask you a question and why he thought of me when he was asking you that question. He could ask you any question in the world, but he asked you that question that day, and it blows my mind. Let's give him the mic for a second. Why don't you introduce yourself as well, and why don't you tell us why you asked that question, or why that's where you went. Sure, Uh, I'm Greg Rand. Um, Richie uh, uh, taught my son in fifth grade. The reason I asked the question was that, um, so my son was, uh, had a really hard time in elementary school, and his confidence got blown by a series of, ex- of, of examples of situations, but the worst one was that he had a fourth grade teacher who nicknamed him Tweedledum. And I learned about Tweedledum one day when he came in to me and said, like, I asked, I don't know how it came up, something about, you know, what do you want to do when you grow up kind of thing, right? And he said, well, I wanted to be like you, business guy, mm-hmm. um, but that's not going to work out. You're like, why? Like, like, why? He says, yeah. I, you know, so I'm, not, I'm not smart enough. And he didn't say it, he didn't say it like, he was bummed out. He said it like he was just resigned to the fact that, you know, oh well, you know. Settled in. Settled in, yeah. And so he was, you know, that moment was like, okay, that's not going to work. So <laughs> uh, we searched for another school, and this little school that he worked in, that they didn't have, I mean, you guys didn't have running water for part of the year in that place. I mean, it was a beat up old building, but I met him, and he said, give him to me, send him to me, that's what I'm on the earth for, right? I'll turn him around. 
I already did. Weren't you, you taught fifth grade or you taught multiple grades in that I just, school? I was the fifth grade teacher at my school. So it was just serendipitous. Yeah. Yeah. And so long story short, I'm sitting there in the audience at VoiceCon. I, I had anything I needed to get out of that from just listening to all the speakers, listening to you. Um, but I, he was on my mind because I knew that he could do all this if he channeled what he does in the classroom and he does person to person. Uh, he's got a dream to build this cattle ranch and he needs... He needs income for that. He needs a business yep. opportunity for yep. that. And I said, this is the opportunity. This has got to be it. But I didn't want to push him too hard. And so that's why I asked you, what do you do? And whatever you said to do, I was going to do. Either you could have said, just back off, let him take his time, in which case I would have. Or you might have said, go all in and push him. Um, I didn't expect you to say, bring him up. <laughs> all right? Uh, that was a, a really happy surprise. I'm just so flattered that I got to a place in your life that you were actually going to listen. I'm very, I'm, uh, I was just sitting here, I was yeah. flattered. That yeah, was very nice. No, it was cool. And so, uh, and th- the point is, is, the same year that he lost his son was the year he was teaching mine. Yeah. So it wasn't just this is all going on, this was all going on at the same time. Uh, and so it just blew my mind that, um, you know, he was able to dig so deep during that same year to help me do something in my life that was so, it was just so many parallels is the point. You yeah, know? of course. My son, his son. Of course. Um, what happened when you guys left here in November, by the way? We had such a touching meeting. It was a really nice we meeting. We ran around New York City for a few hours. Yeah. For one thing. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that was nice. <laughs> but uh, he called, we called our wives um, and we started making plans to, well, you made a point that we should make the film. That's where Nathan comes in. We hired Nathan right around that same time and Nathan made the movie, came out this morning. Um, no crap. It came out this morning? Yeah. I'm in such a touchy mood. I said no crap. I don't think I've ever said no crap. Like that's <laughs> how, like I'm losing my cursing. I'm so touched. Keep going. So that's it. So we, we made the movie. Took a while to get it done. He works full time for us now doing the kind of things that you recommend businesses do. Uh, but it took a, big, a good chunk yeah, of the month re- to yeah, make this. Of course. And, uh, and so that was it. He's been starting to do it. But his, his farm is getting traction now. And... I'll let you talk more about that, about how that becomes the, the, the vessel by which you touch more lives and so forth. And let, let's, let's switch back the mic to you. Thank you, brother. Right. And let's, uh, let's um, cause we, you know, we, are, we haven't gotten to this point for everybody who's listening or watching. Let, you know, you allude to, if the worst thing you can ever imagine happens, you can still move forward. We haven't really even gotten to the punchline. You've just alluded to it. I'm sure if we survey every parent that's listening and watching right now, you know, obviously not the kids that don't have kids yet. Uh, when you get to the ultimate question of like, what's the worst thing that can happen? 85% of them is gonna be a guess of mine are gonna say the loss of a child. So that's what happened to you. Yeah, um, my wife and I believed for twin boys and um, sure enough, the first time around, we uh, were fortunate enough to have twin boys. They came uh, three months early. One more time. Just for my, I don't think I remember this part. You're telling me that you and your wife, pre-children, arbitrarily or like randomly or whatever, you guys literally put into the universe that when we have our first children, we prefer them to be twin boys. We just believed it with all of our heart. (laughs) I'm I'm sorry to laugh. I'm like, you know, mainly because it's like, it's so powerful. I so believe you. And at the same token, like I think about audience, like that's so powerful and crazy at the same time, you know? Yeah, we, we just... Did you believed. have twi- either one of you have twins in your family? No, and that's why we knew it would take a miracle. And uh, that's exactly what we saw happen. And I'll never forget the day that they were born. And I'll never forget the day that... Um, you, guys, you guys knew twin boys were on the way, though? Yes, sir. Okay. Yeah, we did. And Because uh, you know the big trend now is not to find out. That's like the counter right. move. No, I'm no, fascinated we, by that. My, my, my brother doesn't know. He's expecting a second really? in two weeks. Doesn't know. Yeah. Go ahead, I apologize. No, uh, so to talk about miracles we just kept seeing miracle after miracle happen from um from us being able to conceive twin boys to we also wanted to see them holding hands in the womb and we got to see that on video through our ultrasound and we still have that video it was just miracle after miracle and they they were born on valentine's day they were born three months early they they weighed less than three pounds and i got to hold both of those boys and um i got to kiss them and we have one picture of us all together. My wife was holding one of them and I was holding the other one. And so I, I tell myself that I did get to experience that miracle. And I, I was, um, it, it is about perspective. And I feel like I, there's a select few people in this world that will experience watching their children breathe their last breath here on earth. Yep. And um, 
it it changed my life. It really did. It changed it. Um, you you knew Gunnison was in trouble right away. No, he was born. Um, they were born <clears throat> early. He had a heart murmur, which is very common yes. for um, babies in general. That's even right. though He was premature, and so we believed that the heart murmur would be healed, and it was healed. The doctors gave him some medicine to heal the heart murmur. Uh, a couple of days later, we found out that one of the very rare side effects to that medicine is a disease called NEC, which is an infection in your intestines. And so he got that disease and they, they operated on him at 14 days old. And we kept believing, you know, we had seen so many miracles happen in our lives. We were like, well, this is just another miracle that's going to happen. And so we believe that we chose, it's a, it's a choice. To it's believe. a choice. Life is a perspective. Yes. You're yes. like, I, you know, you're preaching to the choir. Like, I genuinely believe everything happens and you either decide that this is an adversity that's gonna lead to promise or that this is the thing that ruined your life. I, 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 believe, I believe in perspective. I believe in optimism. I genuinely believe that optimism is the ultimate drug in our society. I also, just who I am, wanna make sure that people understand there's a fine line between optimism and delusion. Yes, sir. I think that's where people have lost their way with optimism. They've confused it sometimes with delusion. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Um, nonetheless. Yeah, so we, we, we chose to believe for that miracle and the doctors operated on him. They came out and told us that it went well. So we... we had we another were, miracle. Yeah, and then in the coming hours they told us you know, that his body had gotten too toxic and um, we got to spend a little bit more time. And even at the very end of his life here on earth, I still, in my heart, believe that... He was going to figure it out. That, that he would be healed and I, I believe to this day that um, he has a new body and a, and a better home and that's that's my choice and I, I, I choose that because I feel like that's the only choice I can have. Of course. And, um, so then my wife and I still have a, our other twin boy, Sterling, who is, um, I don't know if I mentioned their names, were Sterling Odell Swain III and Gunnison Strait Swain. And Sterling's still in the NICU and he's still, you know, he was still in there fighting for his life and he spent 67 days and then after that, my wife had this, my wife and I both had this, this strong desire for a lot of kids and we didn't let the loss of one keep us from That's right. believing in that. And so the next year we had, so they were born on Valentine's Day, the next year we had our next son, his name is Riser Gray Swain and um, he was born on Thanksgiving another holiday baby, and then just this past year we had another little girl and her name's Montgomery Sky Swain. And I'm just, I'm You guys gonna keep going? Yes, sir. We'll have as many as they'll they'll have. Yeah, yep. Good for you. I appreciate you listening to that. It means a lot. I really appreciate it. So um, we we have this this farm that we live on, and and, um, about the time that that Gunnison passed away, we we started, on his marker, uh, it says Gunnison Strait Swain. February 14th, 2015, February 28th, 2015, and on the very bottom it says, impacting thousands of lives. That came to my wife and I after he had passed away because we knew his 14 days here on earth was going to impact thousands of lives, and it is, it has, and it will continue How to do so? so. Educate the audience. When we get a chance to share our story with other people, I think that it helps other people heal. And when, when and where did you initially start sharing? At school, it, at church, at community, school, at, at friends, like yeah, what? School, church, friends, just anybody that was willing to listen. That was willing to listen, and it wasn't like we had to go and open the doors. It, the doors were being opening, were opening for us, and so we were walking right through them, and 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 doing it, and um, giving our time to to causes such as NEC, March for Dimes, things like that, because that was also us volunteering our time was allowing us to heal as well. So it was it was a good thing, and we we have we live on a farm in the country in North Carolina, and we want to take what we feel like we've been blessed with and given, and use that as an opportunity for people to come there and make memories and impact lives that way. Um, I, I told these guys not too long ago I had a dream, and I saw a bunch of kids running down on the river bottom, a bunch of kids just running on that river bottom, and I saw cabins up on the hill. I won't I won't. It burns inside of me, man, like nothing else, to see people's lives impacted. And I got a, I got a good reason for that. I got something driving me, just like you have something driving you as well, I believe. And um, I guess people can take their families anywhere in the world, you know, and have a, the opportunity to make a memory. And you'd prefer it to be on your farm? Yes, sir. 
I do, because. And so what's been happening since we met in November we were talking about different things. I remember there was a story about like the community helping build the fence or something like that excited me. Yeah. R- remind me of that a little bit. Yeah, I sure. Th- well, um, there's a lot of parents that he, whose kids he taught. Yep. That have a um, have a lot of love for him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And so when he's been going back after leaving school at three o'clock, whatever, driving an hour back to the to the farm and working on the stuff on his own. And so one of the parents threw a, a flare up, and I don't know, thirty or forty of us showed up, and we finished up the fence. Which like three hours of that, I was looking for like a two week nap. I don't know, <laughs> labor but uh, but I was real proud of having help. Everyone's a tough guy until they work on a farm <laughs> for a day. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Post holes. Um, and uh, and so we got a chance then to get really a good, a good feel for the land and the property. And he's filled me in and taught me a lot about being a cattle farmer and understanding how that whole process works. Um, what, the one thing that you didn't say when you talked about who who and how you shared your story, you began sharing on, sharing on Instagram. <laughs> He began flipping the camera on and being on the on the tractor and just talking a little bit. Why does that come natural to you, Instagram? Like that threw me for a little bit of a loop. You're a good country boy, you know, and uh, the Instagram content thing like that excites me. Like, and and listen, you're you you know, even just listening carefully the last time and now this time, the, you're clearly an incredible communicator. It's probably why you're a big time teacher. I'm sure you've known that about yourself in some ways, right? When I was growing up, I was. I was extremely shy, and uh, it kind of still takes me back sometimes now to think that I'm standing up in front of kids and a bunch of people at times. And, and when did you first know that you were good at it, though? For real, just curious uh, for my own self. Probably when I was 18. What happened? I was just I was being get, doors were opening for me to, to to be in front of people and and, and through what platform? Um, well, I used to work on a ranch up in Virginia, and um, through that ranch we would do rodeos and trail rides. And, and so that's what happened. Just, yeah. yeah, I was up got there. Got it. Um, that's the answer. Opportunity. You got a, a picture that when he's being, he's mild mannered right now. When yes. He's doing the teaching thing. He's got. He's a off the charts. Lasso in there in the classroom. Yeah. He's got chaps up on the wall. Listen, fifth like, graders, are, you got to really pull it out to get their attention. Like I think I'm at my most juiced when I talk to like junior high kids. I'm like, this is a tough audience. I got to yeah, really bring it. Keep, yeah. Excited. I curse. They love it every time. <laughs> yeah. You know, like that—that's a cheap trick. He's really doing it. Yep, uh, I had um, guys like you and, and Greg, and even my wife, who's one of my my biggest supporters, um, and she's she's a beautiful lady. I'm, I'm honored to be married to her, um, encouraging me to do this. And in the beginning, like me showing what I was doing after I got home from work, um, being on the tractor, and I think what. I, I really like about that is I'm showing I'm showing videos of what I'm doing on the farm and I got my kids right next to me and um, what I've come to realize with that is I used to kind of sometimes think about dang it's going to take me about an hour longer to do this because I got two the kids, kids yeah I got two kids sitting here with me you don't and, need them falling off <laughs> right no yeah gotta be careful but then I started realizing that this is what I'm I need to be doing. I need to slow down. I need to have them on the tractor with me. I need to be teaching them how to do this so that one day that desire will burn in them, hopefully as as well. And I saw it as an opportunity to to pour into my kids because I pour into other kids, you know, other other parents' kids all the time. You know, being a teacher, but um, I want to be able to pour into mine as well when I get home. And and making those memories with them on the farm is is pretty special. Try to be empathetic to the crowd. Who's listening and watching right now? What um, what do you want them to think about on on a good people day? Man, that's a good that's a good. You know, if somebody said it, you man. know if somebody said to you, listen, it's an important question because I think about it all the time. I, I think about things like this. I think about modern technology, and one day me playing this all out. I actually believe what I'm about to say. I believe there will be a moment because of the way my career has been framed and what I'm up to no different than you picturing kids playing on your farm, I genuinely believe there will be a moment in my life where I will have the audience of the entire world. I really believe that. I believe that, and I don't mean in, in sparse moments. I don't mean that over the course of 30 years of content creation that I'll be able to get to everybody. I mean in a singular moment that for some reason intuitively I believe there will be a platform that comes along over the next 20 to 50 years that I will get an at bat for a minute, I, I, this is where it gets hazy in my daydreams, but I, I feel like I address the world. I do. I feel like some version of a P 
pay-per-view, like, you know, I think Live Aid or something. I'm trying to think about the things that have happened in the past that have gotten similar. And, you know, there's a part of me that, you know, no different than dreaming up twins, which is like still got me rocked. There's a part of me that, I'm sure there's a part of you that when you guys dreamt that up, that if the doctor came and said, it's a girl and it's a single girl, you would have been like, that's amazing. Too. Like, it's not like, I think one thing that people confuse ambitions and dreams with is what happens when they don't happen. I love ha- having them and I'm super comfortable when they don't happen. Yes, sir. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I don't know what this vision I've had is of like me addressing the world for seven minutes, but I weirdly think it's gonna happen or some version of it. And in that, I always ask myself, what are you gonna say? You've got 7.8 billion people, you're gonna speak in English, it's gonna translate to native tongue because of languages, and in five minutes, you are going to talk to the entire fucking world. The hell is gonna come out of your mouth? Now, the answer is, especially what's happened with me over the last decade, I realize I don't know. Because the reality is, what I talk about has continued to evolve as I've continued to evolve. But in a very, 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 very micro version of that, on this platform at this moment, what do you want them to know? I, would, I think I would want them to know that investing into others is the best investment you can make. Into yourself, right? Yeah, yeah, investing into others, investing into yourself. Have you thought about what admiration tastes like? So this is now a left field question. I don't know why what me, you just saying that made me ask you this, but investing in others is the best investment you can make. I add on for yourself. Yes, sir. Which then leads me to, when I look, what, you know, I'll, actually this is very meta having you in the room. There's only one reason I said I want you to bring him up there. I rarely see that level of admiration. I know what admiration looks like. It is the reason I'm addicted to making content. I don't need fame. If I needed fame, I wouldn't have gone into my daddy's liquor store to help him. I would have moved to Los Angeles to be a movie star. That's what you did in 19 fucking 94. I never, I, I never made a piece of content until I was 31 years old. I was not chasing fame. As I started evolving, things I was doing were creating admiration. Which is what I think gets teachers high. Right? Yeah, oh yeah. When you brought him up, it was instant for me. I was like, another human to admire somebody, which is what led me to Good People Day. You were the face for me of the reboot of Good People Day. You were as good of a person as I can think has crossed my path in a very long time. I genuinely believe it. I'm actually sitting here a little bit anxious of like, who the fuck am I gonna put on next year? (laughs) I actually sat here and said, wait a minute, like literally in this, this is now me just sharing with my audience. Um, I'm like, man, this should be my podcast. Like instead of doing what, like I've been wanting to do more interviewing, but I, I put out, I, I often make the joke like my podcast I feel proud of because I put out content, everybody else interviews people, that's easy. One of the things that just ran through my mind is like, this is the pot, if I interview people, this is who I want to interview. Not people that everybody knows, right? I just want to interview good, pure good. Like real pure good. Because there's a lot of disguised good. There's a lot of disguised good. I just genuinely think you're pure good. No, I appreciate that compliment, sir. Admiration answer it for me, because I'll tell you why I'm asking you. Because humans, I think one of the things that makes me so consumable is I'm unbelievably comfortable in all my selflessness, I'm unbelievably comfortable speaking about my selfishness. And I think every human is wired that way. Now some people want a Lamborghini and some people want admiration. They're very different. And neither are right or wrong. You know, I think a lot of people when I razz on Lamborghinis and I'm not judging them. I don't like that they're selling that lifestyle for their own self-interest and I want to make sure people understand the framework. But you can have anything you want. It's, this is America. That's, you know, like do you. My judgment means zero. I just have come to realize, my God, I do everything because I like admiration. I like to be admired. It feels nice. Do you. Yeah, I mean, I think that it's, it is nice to, to be admired. Do you consciously understand that question? Um, Has that crossed your mind? No, it hasn't. But as I'm framing it now, you're, does it make sense? Yes, sir. Okay, so now let me stop because I apologize that I'm side railing this, but this is something I want to fucking figure out. If I'm right, and again, what's so fun about doing content, what am I going to say 
in 40 years? I don't know because I know the word admiration hadn't come out of my mouth for the first 13 years. Like, I don't think the word admiration's come out of my mouth prior to 18 months ago. 12, like this is a, an, so we, out you can't, we all do. No matter how self-aware I am, we continue to go through it. I realize, I'm like, the reason I'm zeroing in here right now when I'm breaking the interview is I'm like, okay, I'm a good guy. He's a great guy. We may need to really start talking about admiration. What if admiration's the framework for a better world? What if we actually talk about the selfish, selfishness of wanting admiration as a framework to all the selflessness that can go on in the world and how do we look at that as a wonderful thing, not as narcissism? Yeah, it actually reminds me, reminds me of why capitalism works, right? Self-interest economically causes creative, which the benefits end. lots of other people. The end. You just spin it around to. The point. problem with capitalism, and I'm the biggest capitalist, is what happens to the old lion. What's, hap- what's manifested in America with capitalism, which is why it has cracks of vulnerability, is then people want to change the game when they're old and no longer, they're in preservation right, mode. That's right. Self-interest when you're building is amazing. Right. Self-interest when you've done building and you want to tear down everybody else's right. building so that, they, got it? Yeah. That's the evolution that I'm upset with. Athletes retire. Right. Entrepreneurs try to make up rules through politics. That's where it's become vulnerable. Nonetheless, we're not gonna get into that subject. <laughs> I want to use the last couple moments and minutes to, you know, obviously, you get, I'm sure you give a lot of thought to this, and this has been, a, you know, mm. what have we not covered? What would you like to, you know, what, have, what have, you know, what have we not, co- you know, whether it's gonna say, like, what have we not covered? I've got one if you want to think about it for a second. Go ahead, sorry. Please. To, to be selfish on his behalf because he doesn't have any of them. Um, I think that people coming to his farm for every person that actually gets there there's 100,000 people that can get there by virtue of the internet. They can get there by virtue of what he does. Throw, throw some right hooks for him. Like, let, let's get back to that punchline. Yeah, I actually, actually we want to we document the building of this farm. There's no cows on the farm yet. He's got cows there on his parents' farm. He needs to get them there. He's got to build infrastructure to be able to do that still. And so the thought has occurred to us, we've talked a lot about it, that it would be, re- he's got a bull. It's, it's, it's <laughs> I love this farm. shit. This is the first, it's really interesting stuff. By the way, I hate it, the Chicago Bulls, especially you, Michael Jordan. <laughs> Go ahead. Phase just had one to drop that farming in. for cattle is birthing calves. That's the first okay. phase. There's no slaughtering going on on his farm, right? It's all birthing. So there's a bull, there's a bunch of heifers, and there's a bunch of calves. The bull has no name. We want to name the bull. I Gary, said, you need to name the bull Gary. I mean, this is super yeah, simple. Yeah, he, he suggested D-Rock. But that just <laughs> makes sense. Zero. Freaking built in the bull. <laughs> okay, go ahead, go ahead. But the idea that there are... What, do you want to get a sponsorship deal for the bull naming? No. I kind of like it. Yeah, I like, that's where I'm going, by the way. I think a lot of people, a lot of people grow up... Make this practical for me because I have a... Listen, I have not put out a lot of content like this. My intuition, and I see it every day, is I have a remarkable community because of the framework I've created. Uh, I have a funny feeling something's about to happen right now where like a lot of people watching and listening are gonna really give a crap and wanna do something good. Okay. Make it, instead of just pure charity. Right g- yeah, give me, right, g- give let, me, me understand every, let me understand every right hook that's practical in the business of a farm because I don't know. Okay, so first we made a film. Nobody's yes. seen it yet, it came cool. out this morning. Okay? Where, how, where can they see it? Uh, we can get it to you and maybe can get that it. That I'll share, but like just for the, are you putting it's it on a, his Facebook page, Impacting Thousands of Lives. It's, it's co- gonna in, be there. Is facebook.com slash impacting thousands of lives? Correct. Is there right, a dot com? Yeah, it's just, um, yeah, it's on Instagram too. Uh, well, that, I have an Instagram page, Impacting Thousands of Lives. Is the thousand, the number thousand? Like, no, impacting? It's the, word. Word. it's the word. Jesus Christ, you couldn't come up with a longer name? <laughs> Sorry. We're gonna have to do some branding. You're, like, you're gonna teach me how to make hay. I'm gonna teach you how to brand properly. I'm yeah, just kidding. I'd, I'd love Go ahead. to teach you that. Go ahead. I just want people to follow the progress. Okay, if, 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 if anybody out there grew up wishing they could spend the summer on the farm. What about, yeah, what about the people that live within a four hour drive? Because I've bunch of road trip people about to do this. Impacting thousands of lives on Facebook and Instagram, make content. Is there a dot them. com? Not yet. Okay, no. I love that. So, and so what? Straight up to this people thing. coming to your farm is good how? What do they buy, what do they do? Well, we've already had people come to the farm, which is awesome. We I'm started sure. that last year. My wife had um, maybe 20 or 30 women come out there. They all had this common thing that they, it was these fashion, well, she would probably be mad at me if I said fashion bags, but it was something called Nina, whatever that is, but it was these fancy Guatemalan bags, and so all these women came out, and we just hosted them, and we took them on hay rods, and we had like a bonfire going for them, and they were just having a great time. And is that a business you're in now? 
Like, no. do people get, okay, so what about the business? Like, how does the farm make money? Right now, the, the way that the farm makes money is, this year I, I started selling hay off the farm, and then I have five cows right now. Do you ship hay on the internet? Because I have a feeling <laughs> a super fan of mine in, in like Oklahoma is gonna be like, I want the hay, I just. Yeah, so our barn is empty, which is, which is an awesome blessing. That like, means you we, sold all your hay? We sold all our hay from You bought year. some hay? He doesn't have no place to put it. Come on, you need to buy one bushel. I even knew it was called a bushel. I'm proud of it just now. So what else do you say? So is it? Bell. God yeah. damn it. Thank you for calling me out. But um, the other thing that we do with five cows, they hopefully have five calves each year. So You sell the calves? We sell the calves at, five, at 500 pounds. Do you ship the cows? The calves? Well, they just go to, they go to the livestock market or a, another farmer close by will buy them right off the farm, which is, which is really nice. Yes. So How else does the farm make money? Uh, right now, that's it. It's selling selling five calves a year and selling hay, which is something that we started this so year. So what are you thinking about, businessman over there? Uh, I'm thinking that the world's full of people that wish they grew up on a farm, and if we get people to start paying attention, the farm is not a full-blown business yet. It's got no consumer-facing piece to it. So. But you're thinking that? I'm thinking that people follow You know what I'm thinking? I'm thinking about businesses like VaynerMedia doing their company off-site at the farm around getting off out of the office and under a framework of good. And not cushy, luxury. It's yeah, not like, what do they call it? Uh, what do they, they call that camping? Like glamping, right? Like if it's glamorous camping? It's, we got some time to get to a place. People don't know my backstory. I think maybe in the Empathy Wines video, I talk a little bit about where I grew up in Jersey. I'm playing a little dumb here. Like I literally, literally dug pig shit out of a farm on Saturdays because my dad had two random pigs. Like my dad was born in the old country. We had two cows, we had two pigs. My high school, I grew up in Edison but then we moved in eighth grade so my high school years were in Hunterdon County, New Jersey that look a hell of a lot more like your North Carolina than people. People don't realize there's parts of Jersey's that gets real country. The first week in school, the second week in school, I apologize, I just came to this new school. My homeroom in Edison was bigger than my entire eighth grade class. I come into school the second week of the year there's not a single guy in the school. I literally think I'm dreaming. I literally do. <laughs> then I quickly think I'm not dreaming because I'm. I understand I'm not dreaming. I literally thought that there was some weird, like backwoods rule that guys didn't have to come to school. I get into homeroom and I go, Mr. G, where are all the dudes? He goes, It's the first day of hunting season. What are you doing here? <laughs> so that's like I know. Like I agree with you. Like a lot of who I am. I talk about the liquor store, I rarely talk about the pig shit and like all the other work. Like hard work matters. It fucking matters. Yeah, I wanna just turn the thing into a full-pledged corporate offsite because companies will pay 10,000 bucks just to hang outside for three days. <laughs> you know, you wanna talk about good business? Yeah, yeah, everyone's soft. Everybody in this city needs I to go to that bar. The, the one day. <laughs> So you sell hay and five calves? Yes, sir. That's, that's well, we need to we need to build a bigger scalable business. I think. Yeah, that would be that good. Would be wonderful. I, <laughs> I won't like hearing you talk about you know bringing having having people come there and yeah. and, and be re-energized or be yeah. calmed down. Yeah. Whichever that I, I would love to have places for those people to stay in so that they can like, man. I, I, I bring my school kids up there, so we take, that's the end of the year field that's trip. That's super cool. My fifth grade class comes up to the farm. It's, it's what they look forward to the most. And as a dad, and as a teacher, and as just a good old country boy, there is nothing that I enjoy more than seeing a kid catch their first fish on the farm. You know, like the excitement of, and I almost, I, I would hope that almost everybody in this room would say, I remember the first time I caught a fish. I do. And it was it was bullshit though. There, was, there were these little sunfish that were right by the edge of the water, and I was just racking it up. Yeah. Came home, told my mom I caught thirty nine fish, but really I still feel like a catfish I caught later that year was the actual first fish. Yeah, but you will never forget that memory. Nope. And that's what my family is so so. Uh... Jason, you ever catch a fish? <laughs> Dust. It's okay, man. Barely. Don't. Barely. <laughs> Fit. <laughs> <laughs> Got it. Good. No, that's just what we're so passionate about. E even as a family, like we we focus more on making memories than anything else. That's us, and and I want to be able to do that for so many other families out there. Is I have a place for them to be able to go and make memories that will last a lifetime. Because you don't forget those memories, and they're what make you into the, the men and women that I believe you're supposed to be. I've really enjoyed getting to know you. <laughs> Thank you for your time, man. I really yeah. appreciate your Anything, time. Anything, any last parting shot, thoughts? 
We so good. Sasha Group could have their first offsite over at the at the ranch. Yeah, listen, it's <laughs> aggressively running through my mind. I'm super late on figuring out VaynerMedia's 10th anniversary strategy. Uh, I don't know if we. Uh, how long is a bus ride to North Carolina from New York? Oh man, I couldn't name it. I'll tell you from here. Eleven. Yeah, right about there. Nice, I nailed it. I got the bushel thing wrong, but I got the hours on the on Route 95. I once drove an RV from Boston to Florida during college for spring break. It's one of the most ridiculous stories I have. I have to start remembering some of the memories, but I've got the whole East Corridor drive kind of contextually down. Uh, I thank you for sharing your story. Yes, sir. I thank y'all for listening to it. It means a whole lot. Have a great day. Yes, sir. All right, we're done. You nailed it. My friend. I My friend. It. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to the honor of wearing that shirt. Yes, sir. Wear it. I will proudly. Good to see you. Thank Good you. to see you. I really appreciate it.